Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Hope y'all having a great day. It is Tuesday. Yesterday, Chris and I had a very productive day. We made calendars for Colored Valley Cooks and Real uh, Cake Lessons is my new uh, YouTube channel. And if you go in there and look at it, there's nothing there yet, but our first post will be tomorrow. So um, that's exciting. It's all about cake. It's all about how, the, you know, techniques to making a cake, how to make a cake, how to ice a cake, how to decorate a cake, how to make fondant, how to make royal icing, how to make buttercream. I mean, the list goes on and on. It's going to be a fun, fun channel. So, um... I encourage all of y'all to take a look tomorrow because it will be launched tomorrow for the first video. Um, and it is called just simply Cake Lessons on YouTube. Now, I'm not, I don't know that I'm going to use Facebook as a platform or not yet. I just don't know for sure. I've got to make up my mind. It's hard for me to keep up with too much, so I'm not sure that I will. Um, we do have our website launched, except... Um, he had to transfer the domain name. Right now, if you want to just look at it, you can go to www.cooklikemamadia.com and see our new website. Um, or you can wait a few days. Once he transfers it, it'll be www.coloredvalleycooks.com. But if you're nosy and you want to see the new website, we have a blog. It's got a lot more information on it. Uh, you're welcome to go over there and take a look. Like I said, it's Cook Like Mama Did. Dot com. Now, today we are doing our Bible study. Yesterday, me and Chris made a schedule for CBC and a schedule for uh, Cake Lessons. And I'm going to tell y'all what it is, just so you know. Um, we're going to post... We're going to post for CBC on Tuesdays and Saturdays. We're going to post on Cake Lessons on Sat um, on um, Wednesdays and Sundays. So if that gives you an idea of when uh, you can see the new videos, that's the days. Okay? We made schedules that we know what we're going to cook every week all the way up till June. So that's exciting. Tonight, uh, Chris thought he had laid out chicken, and I got in here and it was wings. And we didn't have time to cook them, so I just whipped up the Alfredo recipe out of our Volume 2 cookbook. I also iced a cake. I made a layer cake the other day. I, I noticed somebody put on my group, Colored Valley Cooks group, that they're putting less mix in the cake mixes. And um, so I noticed that. So I actually used almost two cake mixes to make a sheet cake. So it was really thick. And I... I cut it in half, y'all, because we had already ate a slither off of it. And look how tall this cake is. That's really tall, ain't it? Anyway, I iced it tonight. So, today, we made buttercream. We made Mama's White Cake Layers. That'll be on Cake Lessons coming up soon. Um, and then me and Amy got in here and made the, our Alfredo sauce. It's in the Volume 2 cookbook. So, uh, the cookbooks have come in handy today. It was so nice for her to go, Mama, I want, I want Alfredo. And I was like, Amy. And she's like, I'll help you make it. And she grated the Parmesan. That I had some fresh Parmesan. She grated it. And we had the little cookbook. It tells you exactly what to do. And so, it was simple and easy. I know some of you guys have seen Amy and May's Biscuit Bake Off. I know I may clip this out and put it on Car Valley Cooks because it's got a lot to do with cooking. But anyway, that was fun and a lot of y'all liked it so much. We have scheduled Bake Offs every month, at least once a month. Next month, it's going to be me and Chris doing a Bake Off. And then the following month, it'll be the girls. So um, I think that'll be fun. Um, I love having this schedule. I think it's going to help my demeanor, my attitude, um, and everything because so much has happened since Color Valley Cook started, you know, and Chris is retired, and it's just nice to have a schedule and know what we need to be doing instead of feeling like we need to be doing something all the time. So I'm excited about that. Um, Janine, if yours is not 
loading, I believe it's on your end. You're probably lagging in the internet section. That's what's so crazy about this, because if it's lagging on my side, I know it. Um, so anyway, we're going to jump right into Bible study, I guess, and I just thought I'd tell you a few things first. We have been busy, busy, and I'm sorry, but yesterday I went to see Mama. See, we made a prime rib roast yesterday. We had friends come over and eat. I left as soon as they left, went to see Mama, and didn't get back until 9 and I was just exhausted, so I'm sorry, but I didn't get to Bible study. I read and listened to my Bible when I when I rested at 1.30 yesterday, but I didn't get to talk to y'all. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, so we're going to take a look. Yesterday was a really good lesson, too. So uh, today is February the 26th. Um, and... We're going to see what Charles Stanley has to say today. It says, so, so, what's worthy? It says, whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. Haven't we heard that a million times? Whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. This is out of Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. He says, what are you sowing into your life? What are you planting into your mind, spirit, and heart? You are having a quiet time, which is an excellent first step. But are you truly allowing God's truth to take root in you? Are you responding to the opportunities and challenges he allows us with faith and obedience? This is important for you to take seriously because the principle of sowing and reaping directly impacts your future. Shaping even what you become in eternity, you can look that up in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12, you are reaping what you sow. You are growing either in intimacy with the Father or in rebellion against Him. You are reaping more than you sow. Even the smallest decisions impact the generations after you, whether you realize it or not. Finally, you are reaping later than you sow. The choices you make continue to have either increasing consequences or accumulating blessings in eternity. That comes out of Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Therefore, make sure that you're always sowing what is good and worthy each and every day. Sow faith and obedience to God. Because in due time, you will reap an extraordinary harvest if you do not lose heart. That comes out of Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And Charles Stanley says, Jesus, help me to sow only these, those things that bring you honor, so that the harvest of my life will glorify you. Amen. So we've all heard that we sow what we reap, haven't we? And you know what bring this, brings this to mind for me more than anything? Because I have teenagers. Oh, my Lord, when you have teenagers... Every decision they make can truly impact their future like crazy. And we think that's true with teenagers, but it's also true with us as far as just our everyday general joy and our abundant life through Christ. Um, whether or not we're living um, that abundant life is up to us, whether or not we take the time out to let him talk to us through his word and uh, try to learn more about God and do his will in our lives. But as teenagers, my teenagers, they have so many um, obstacles to overcome still. And they are, um, everything they do, everything will impact them right now. You know, whether or not, uh, whether, where they decide to go to college, what they decide to take. And do they really want to do that? And do they really want to do this? And do they want to date this boy? Or do they not want to date this boy? Is he a Christian? Or, you know, is he an atheist? I mean, May had a boyfriend um, that was an atheist. And um, I think I think she kind of thought that she once she got to know him, they're really good friends even today. But I think she thought that he would kind of lean her way, and it just never happened. And they only dated for about six months, and this was a couple of years ago. 
And um, so it really just, you know, it was discouraging to her that he wouldn't come around. And really and truly, um, and we've taught him not to start dating somebody like that anyway. But you know how us women are. We fall and we uh, get encouraged and we uh, make a choice because it's good for the day instead of our future. And then some of us do wind up marrying somebody that we're unequally, unequally yoked with. Now, thank the Lord that uh, May did break the, the um, strings, although they are friends, like I said. But what really, I think, topped the cake with her is that um, his parents were going uh, to some type of Buddhism, Buddhist thing downtown in Atlanta. And I think that just really topped the, the scale. He had actually went to the beach with us. and You could see some pictures of him. He's sweet and he's smart. Oh, my word, is he smart. But um, we had actually went to the beach with, he had gotten to go to the beach with us. And when she got back, they were going to that. And it, I think it just... You know, she really could see the reality of the way that they believed in their life. And really and truly, they're all, they all need Jesus. You know, they all need Jesus. And Sam needs Jesus as well. And um, we all need Jesus. And if we act like we don't, then we're just, we're just, um, that decision, just that decision alone keeps us from living in abundant happy, joyful life here on this earth because um, he has made a way for us to have all the joy we need. Um, so anyway, these um, are things that we have to think about each and every day and pray about and pray for our young people and pray for our daughters and our sons and um, just hope that they can make the right decisions because we will one day reap what we sow and that applies to us as well as old people whether or not we choose to spread the gospel whether or not we choose to tell people about jesus christ whether or not we um spread the joy that is inside of us um is our decision and i fail just like everyone i mean all of us are not perfect and all of us sin but we should strive to try our best to do that. So um, I'm going to see what this study Bible has in it. This is a study Bible that belongs to my teenagers. It's a teenager study Bible. So we're going to look at the Galatians in this Bible and just see what it says. Now, Galatians is in the New Testament. It is Paul writing to the church of Galatia. So let me find it. After Corinthians and before Ephesians. And Galatians is a, a very beautiful book. Now, I think it was chapter 6, but I'm going to go back and look to make sure. Let's just see what they say. Okay. This is in a teen study Bible, okay? And this is a King James Version, but it's a study Bible, so it has things in it to help uh, young people. And um, this is a question a teenager had um, that they're using, whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap to explain. Now, this is pretty deep subject, but we're going to bring it out and say it. Um, and it says, this boy named Noah asks a question. It says, is AIDS a punishment from God for sexual immoral, immorality? Is AIDS a punishment from God for sexual immorality? And this is Jordan, and I'm not really sure who Jordan is because I don't read this Bible all the time, but it says, Dear Noah, I have heard this question debated more than once. Some people say yes. Others say that for many, it is the consequence of sin. For instance, if you put your hand on a hot stove, it will get burned. 
If putting your hand on a hot stove were a sin, would getting burned be a punishment from God? Or would it be a consequence of your actions? AIDS used to be thought of as a disease that only homosexuals or drug users contracted. contracted. Today we know that all people who have sex with an infected person are at risk. Often people who have often people who have AIDS infect others without even knowing they have the disease. Even nice, healthy looking people get AIDS. Galatians six verses seven and eight warns us whatsoever a man soweth that shall he reap. For he that soweth to his, his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. If you do not want the possible consequences that come from sexual impurity, do not be sexually active outside of marriage. Sometimes innocent people also get AIDS. This can happen if someone were given infected blood, for instance, or if a child's mom had it he or she could be born with the disease. This happens not as a consequence of that person's sin, but as a consequence of living in a sinful world. That was a great explanation. So if I told you it was a sin, if you touch the stove while it's hot, and you touched it anyway, it would be a consequence of your actions. Same way here. I think that's a very good illustration for a teenager and even us to think about. I personally believe that sin does follow families. I believe that's why um, God blessed the Jewish nation back in the day. I believe that's why he blessed the United States of America when it was founded on him, the one and only true God that we believe in in the Old Testament, the Bible. So I do believe that sin is a consequence. Sometimes sin resonates and grows within families as consequences of decisions that an adult or a young person made that was not the right decision. So, um, we are just, you know, the best thing, the smartest thing that we could do, because we all know wisdom comes from the Word of God, not from intellectual books. The spiritual book of the Holy Bible brings us wisdom. So, if you want some wisdom and you want to try to keep from burning your hand on that stove and falling into that sinful life, then open the book and begin to read it. And God and the Holy Spirit can help to guide you. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. I hope all of you watch my new page tomorrow, Cake Lessons on YouTube. Now it's empty, it's just bare minimum, but it's something that will build and grow just like Colored Valley Cooks did. I want to do it because my mama was a cake queen. And that's why I want to do it. And um, I'm going to tell y'all that with Card Valley Cooks, we are going to make one recipe a week that's new. And we are going to make one recipe a week that comes out of one of the cookbooks. And I'll just be honest with you. Um, my passion was starting to be, the light was starting to burn out. And it's because my favorite things that I like to cook the most are in my cookbooks. If I pick up something and I make it, then it's going to be the same stuff I like to make. I know y'all like for me to be live, but when I have to try new recipes just to put something on, I do not feel comfortable putting them on live when I may not like them. I don't always like, you know, these new recipes. And so, unless I like it, I don't really want to post it. And I think this is going to make me much happier to be able to post one of my all-time favorites because then I can cook that for us. 
and that's what I'm going to be cooking anyway. Every night when we have dinner, I'm going to be cooking stuff out of the Volume 1 and Volume 2 cookbook because that's what we grew up eating. Um, and then every once in a while, it doesn't hurt to try something new. So y'all will see a new recipe and an old recipe every week. And that way, you can see what's in Volume 1 and Volume 2 cookbooks. And um, I hope y'all enjoy everything that Chris and I have planned. I hope that um, that you are encouraged by our hard work and dedication because it takes hours to video and it takes hours to edit. And I hope y'all enjoy it. Um, this, like I said, is this enormous cake. Crazy, ain't it? You know what I did? I put a chocolate cake mix in the pan, and then it didn't fill the pan up. And I was going to use this at all my cake lessons. Now I'm not because I made, I made a whole schedule. But anyway, I wanted the cake layer to be tall. And so Chris said, well, just mix up another cake mix. You know them ladies told you on Color Valley Cook's group that the cake mixes didn't have as much in them as they used to. And I was like, okay. So we didn't have another devil's food, so I had a yellow, and I just poured it all in there and just swirled it around and made it a marble cake. And then I have to, uh, we actually cut a slice off that night and ate it, because we're just, that's just how we are. And then the rest of it I stacked tonight and iced. And yes, I got crumbs all in the sides, because it's for us, and um, it was fresh, you know, cake. But anyway, um... I guess we will see y'all soon. We'll see y'all back, back tomorrow for Colored Valley. I mean, for Real Southern Woman's um, Bible study. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so, so, so very much for letting us be in a place that we could worship you freely. We thank you for blessing our nation and blessing us and our families. We pray that each and every day that we would look to you and we do make decisions so that we can be sowing something good that because we are reaping with your will. I know, Lord, that your will more than anything is that we love you with all of our mind, heart, and soul, that we love our neighbor as much as we love ourselves, and that we spread the gospel. I pray that each and every one of us listening to this Bible study will concentrate and meditate on those three commandments that you've given us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Now me and Chris get to eat a piece of cake. Love ya. I gotta come around there to turn it off. Oh, and I've been reading in this huge encyclopedia. It's a, it's like it's like a Bible all about cooking. It's just old as the hills, and I just love it. It's called Cooking for American Homemakers, and it's dated 1968. That's the year before I was born. All right. See you later, alligators.